How do you show that someone is lonely in a film? You could start by placing them all by themselves in a frame, and you could do that a lot. Make sure your protagonist observes other people. They should be on the outside looking in. That's the easy part to pull off. The tricky part is how do you show they're lonely when they're interacting with other people? We've been looking at it backwards. Loneliness is the symptom. Lost in translation is about genuine human connection or a lack thereof. And it's never more clear than when Bill Murray's Bob or Scarlett Johansson's Charlotte are talking to someone else. Look at this scene with Bob. He's alone at a bar when two guys recognize him. When they get his attention, the camera pans over. This scene is shown from his perspective. The moment Bob's no longer interested in them, neither is the camera. Bob Harris? You're awesome, man. Sunset odds. Loved it. Man, that car chase? I couldn't believe it. Four buses, and he took that thing and everything exploded? I heard he did his own driving. I don't know. Did you do your own driving? I did. Cool. So what are you doing here? Um, seeing friends. Seeing friends. Yeah. Great. We're here in business. It's a visualization of the lack of connection between him and the two guys. Now here's a scene with Charlotte and her husband, John. At first, they're walking with arms around each other until Kelly shows up. John takes his hand off Charlotte. From here, most of the scene features Kelly and John talking directly across from each other in the foreground while Charlotte watches in the background. Visually, she's on a different plane than the other two. And the action is up front, yet Charlotte stays in focus. The scene is about her reaction not their action. Charlotte is distant. She is farther away. She is not involved in what is happening in this exchange. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, this, is, uh, this is my wife, Charlotte. Hi, yeah. it's yeah. really nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Hello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wife. Yeah, 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 yeah. John. John, huh. you are my favorite photographer. Oh, No, God. you are. I only want you to shoot me. <laughs> it's true. John initially broke off the physical contact with Charlotte, and in the end, he tries to reconnect, but it's too late. Charlotte got boxed out of the conversation and isn't letting him have a, come here, you, hug at the end. Bob and Charlotte are on similar paths in life. Bob is just 20 years ahead. They're both struggling with their relationships. The joy is completely gone from whatever is left of Bob's marriage. Marriage for him at this point is having to decide on a new shelf or the color of a new carpet. Mundane tasks. It's homework. Charlotte isn't at that stage yet. She's only a few years in. But the love is disappearing quick. She yearns for John to pay attention to her. There isn't a single scene the two share where he is actively present. He's focused on work, unable to offer comfort and affection, or too preoccupied with Kelly. The two share a room, and yet Charlotte is alone. One of the repeating ideas found in the film is a failed attempt at connection due to a barrier. The obvious one is language. Coppola mines American ignorance at every turn for laughs. Is that everything? I mean, it seemed like he said quite a bit more than that. Like an old friend and into the camera. Okay. Both Bob and Charlotte use the telephone, a device that links people across the world with limited success. Several times the person on the other end is distracted or it's too noisy around them to hear clearly. All right, now hold it. You're breaking up, Fred. There's no reception in this studio. Or it's too hard to say how you really feel. Hey. Oh my God, how's Tokyo? It's great here. It's really great. Um, I don't know, I went to this shrine today mm -hmm. and um, there were these monks and they were chanting and I didn't feel anything, you know? And um, I don't know, I, I, I even tried Ikebana and John is using these hair products. I just, I don't know who I married. Oh, can you wait a second? Just hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, sure. Nothing, it's okay. I'll call you later, okay? Okay, have the best time, you know? Just call me when you get back, okay? Bye. Bye. Love you. It's simulated connection. It's not real. 
The two want to reach out or trying to find someone to share with, to be completely honest about their present state, but they can't. Whatever you like, I'm, I'm completely lost. That's not what I'm talking about. What are you talking about? Their parallel paths cross, and it's the first genuine connection on screen. They share another moment at the hotel restaurant. Interestingly here, John is in the background working while Charlotte connects with someone else. Compare the way the first scene where Bob and Charlotte talk to each other to any scene containing John and Charlotte. Bob and Charlotte occupy the same frame here and it's two and a half minutes of dialogue. The closest comparable scene containing John and Charlotte is also telling. It's essentially the inverse. Do you know, I'm tired. Yeah, I, gotta, I gotta go downstairs and meet Kelly for some drinks. She wants to talk about some photo thing. I don't know, you know. Maybe I'll go downstairs with you. Oh, you wanna come? Yeah, sure. He then proceeds to zone her out of the conversation again and spends the dinner looking at Kelly. As the conversation goes on, more and more shots have Kelly and John at the edge of frame, with Charlotte in focus looking towards Bob. In scenes containing John and Charlotte, they rarely share the frame exclusively. We get one, then the other. One idea. Mm, I love Crystal. You want to have some? Then a different idea. Well, I, I, I gotta go. I mean, I, I... And if they are in the frame together, it's because something is being revealed about the strains in their relationship. That's dysfunction. That's what a healthy relationship doesn't look like through shot choice and editing. But what stylistic choices characterize a healthy bond between characters? Two people actively there, experiencing life with each other. Their relationship isn't romantic. Two people, similarly starving for another person to care about them, discover each other. Scarlett Johansson's line says it all. Let's never come here again, because it would never be as much fun. Even if at times they both know they need something more from a relationship, they're both aware that this isn't that. Bob shares a night with another woman, only for Charlotte to find out and get jealous. But she isn't jealous of the act. She makes fun of him for what they talked about. She missed the conversation and the company, and Bob knows that. Well, she is closer to your age. You could talk about things you have in common, like um, growing up in the 50s. Maybe she liked the movies you were making in the 70s when you still were making movies. Wasn't there anyone else there to lavish you with attention? The relationship for Charlotte is about attention. For Bob, it's about someone making him feel alive again. He's reserved, sarcastic, and guarded, all the way up until their big night out together. It isn't until then that he opens up to her and others. After that night, he's reminded of all the wonderful times he shared with his wife. Charlotte represents what things used to be like. I saw a great house tonight that you would have loved, and that burgundy would have been good in this house, really. And a guy designed his own house and built it. He's a fashion guy, you know, all these fashion people were there. And uh, there were Japanese surfers there, and 
the guy was playing really, really, really great music. I should have found out what it was and brought some, I'll bring some back. I'll try to find out. She sees in Bob someone that genuinely cares about her, that pays attention, and isn't constantly preoccupied with himself and what he's doing. They both found each other and shared a moment in time that cannot and will not be replicated between them. That's why it was so hard to say goodbye. They say farewell several times, but after the last embrace, there's no going back. <laughs> 